Okay. So um, as always, I'll be watching the Barnyard chat as well as the chat for the voice channel. Uh, make sure to drop any questions or comments you have in there, and we'll keep track of them and answer them as able. All right. Oh, I'm a couple slides ahead. All right. So upcoming and ongoing items to kick things off. So uh, Beanstalk 3 Draft is right on the verge of being shared for community review. Um, Guy, you and I have been chatting kind of throughout the day. Sounds like sounds like pretty close to, to having that out. Uh, it is out. Oh. I'm shared in the, the BIP50 channel. Wonderful. All right. And I will, uh, I'll put out an announcement uh, when we're done here then to go right along with that. Wonderful. All right. So make sure to check that out when you get a moment. Lots of stuff in Beanstalk 3. So excited to, uh, to hear that draft is out. All right. And then the other thing that's going on, Fork Migration System is still under development. And uh, we do have a uh, Gantt chart and an update uh, later on in the presentation for that. All right. Projects and initiatives. So um, still evolving in how we communicate and made, a, made some tweaks uh, kind of based on the last DAO meeting, I wanted to try to, you know, clean this up and make it look a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more neat. So um, just made some minor changes here. So uh, from here on out, we'll have kind of things split into uh, essentially three different categories above the funnel. And again, you know, for those who uh, haven't heard me talk through this, above the funnel is just kind of the ideas that are kind of floating out in the community or things that are being talked about in in random channels or discussions, um, items that are in the funnel are uh, in some type of planning, uh, pre-development, or some type of you know more solid discussion uh, with the potential of moving into active development, which you see is is there kind of at the bottom. And um, you know, as you notice, Beanstalk three and the fork migration system are the items that are, are currently under development. So that kind of gives us the ability to transition right into the project updates. So not a big change in terms of what this looks like, but hopefully just making things a little bit more clear. I feel like we're kind of underselling ourselves by having just one card for Beanstalk 3 here. I know. I, so many different things, but... I I think that's fair. And um, yeah, I mean, it, I think about that every time I drop in the Gantt chart and I have to make it a weird size to fit all the lines of stuff. There's just a ton of stuff in here. Yeah, I don't know. We can always we can always break it up. Wouldn't hurt my feelings. Any other questions or comments on the project funnel? All right. So Nasjack uh in the uh, in the chat just wrote uh, when will DEX aggregators be in the funnel for basin usage? And what about other projects to increase volume? So I know that um Silo King has been working on reaching out to different different groups to make sure that we're appearing in different places like CoinGecko, etc. So I don't know if you had anything specifically regarding DEX aggregators you wanted to talk about or anything you'd want to touch on. Yeah, sure. So um, at least for the moment, uh, nothing really has been done in that front. Um, you'll hear me talk a little bit later about uh, what I've been working on over the last few weeks. But uh, yeah, currently. There's nothing planned for that, but you know, certainly no reason why we can't work on that at some point. Also, I believe it's Soil King, not Silo King. Yeah, no, um, I'm sorry. But I mean, I, I mean, on this end, I feel like uh, you know, like many things, that's one of those catch twenty twos where it's not particularly compelling for aggregators to integrate with Basin uh, until there's liquidity. Given that if they were to do it today, uh, and anything were to route through Basin, other than perhaps the wrap Steve pool traders would get worse prices. Um, so if being in the funnel is with respect to, you know, sending people emails and Twitter DMs to ask them to do it, uh, you know, I suppose that can come from lots of different people. Uh, and perhaps that is, you know, one strategy. But to me, it's one of those things that happens on its own once there, once there is uh, liquidity and volume, if you will. So Nasdaq writes as a follow-up, so what's above the funnel for increasing liquidity? Why listing wells won't bring liquidity unless people use them? Uh, in my opinion, increasing liquidity is or should be thought of as a byproduct of the stuff we work on. Uh, I mean, my philosophy is that we work on things that, with the intention of increasing the utility of Beanstalk, you know, increasing the efficacy of the peg maintenance mechanism, et cetera, et cetera, and you know, leave it up for, at that point for people to decide whether they want to add liquidity to Beanstalk or not. And it's unclear what 
exactly. Uh, I mean, if people have suggestions for things that would directly increase liquidity, uh, I think that's a worthy discussion. But nothing comes, up, nothing in particular comes to mind on this end. I think that's a a fair point, guy. I mean, I when I think through the work that Beanstalk Farms does, it is really focused on building a really good set of tools and then letting the market or people that interact with Beanstalk do what they will with that set of tools. And, you know, again, we're talking about Beanstalk 3, and it's just a, another really good example of the newest generation of, of tools that users can, can take advantage of. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about the possibilities that come along with Tractor, especially, and, uh, and Stable Swap. And, you know, I think the hope is that, you know, as, as those tools are available, that, that people will get excited about it, but really it's more about providing them and making sure that they're, they're high quality and that, you know, that they're safe for users to use. So Asabinia asks, how are we measuring utility? Is it just peg maintenance? It's an interesting philosophical question. Uh, I mean, in some sense. I'm not sure if this is what Asabina is alluding to, but you know, one answer to the question is more liquidity is higher utility than less liquidity. But as I mentioned earlier, it's not exactly clear what things could be worked on to directly influence that. So in some sense, is it just peg maintenance? Perhaps. I mean, I guess if you think of something like, or just to give an example of something that's not just totally related to peg maintenance, is the utility provided by Gen Convert. Gen Convert is in many ways, in, excuse me. In many ways, more related to the ability to convert from LP tokens to LP tokens, which you know now for the first time uh, since the introduction of the gauge system is actually going to allow people to people being depositors to move being liquidity in the direction of the you know optimal LP BDV distribution that the that the DAO decides on, uh, which is currently not possible. And that. Uh, should have a somewhat neutral effect on peg maintenance. So that would be an example. But uh, so is it just peg maintenance? Probably not. Um, but is that pretty high on the list? I would argue that it should be. And I, I guess what goes through my mind as well is that, again, get guy to your point that it's, it's an interesting, interesting philosophical question. There's, you know, literal market utility or something that's more quantitative or however however you want to qualify utility from a, from a market standpoint or in that frame of reference. But then back to this idea of building unique, useful tools or building tools and capabilities that haven't been seen in the space before. I think there's, there's something to that as well. And, um, you know, and I, when I think about a lot of the conversations that, that we've had with Ben or with, with other individuals where we talk about the idea of Beanstalk being an experiment, there's a certain component of that that involves utility being something something more about building new things and trying new things that isn't easy to quantify from a you know, from a, a more traditional market sense, if that makes sense. There's there's utility in breaking new ground. All right. Any other questions or comments before we jump into the projects? I was just thinking more about the DEX aggregator uh, question. And, you know, even if Bazin were, uh, I don't know what the right, right phrase is, whitelisted or listed in these aggregators, and someone wanted to swap like wrap Steeth for Weath, for example, and that trade routes through the bean with Steeth pool and the bean Weath pool, uh, the net effect on the bean price is going to be zero. So it's unclear what the added value that is unless the person unless the trader using the aggregator is actually uh selling or buying beans in which case it of course would have an effect on peg maintenance and the bean price which you go back to like well how, and how do you get someone to buy beans and i think that's the question that's uh not totally clear and in my view is not really a direct goal of any particular uh one of these projects all right nasdaq was typing but he stopped so i'm gonna hop down into Beanstalk 3. So um, yeah, just again, lots of different components inside of this basket. Um, excited to hear that the draft is out. Yeah, I'll drop an announcement as soon as we get done with the call, but excited to, uh, excited to hear that. And uh, hopefully any, uh, any questions um, that the community has can, can come out and get, get, um, 
get discussed quickly prior to uh, prior to a vote. I think what we might do, and uh, Guy and I had chatted about this kind of quickly here earlier today, is maybe we'll set up a uh, set up an additional meeting some point this week, uh, just for a Q and A session. In case individuals look through the information and and have any particular questions, we'll we'll put some time in the calendar that folks can come in and and ask those questions and get items talked about that might be on their list. Yeah, the the intention was to get the draft out a few days before uh, this meeting so people had a chance to read it. Uh, obviously, it didn't work out, so apologies. But um, so as Rex mentioned, I don't know when the next DAO meeting is exactly, but people read that and there's a bunch of uh, input or feedback or questions people have. Happy to host you know, some sort of Q&A session at some point between now and the next DAO meeting. Sounds good. Since uh, Since this one was slid by about a week, a little bit less than a week, Maybe what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll have a Q and A maybe early next week, and then the regularly scheduled down meeting. Usually, I've got them two weeks apart, so we'll do obviously down meeting today, maybe a Q and A early next week, and then the week after that, back into the regular DAO meeting frequency and rhythm. Okay, and um, again for park migration system. So quite a few items have been completed thus far. Still um, some items to go, most of them having to do with um, audit prep. Um, so as listed, we've got Code Arena that'll be, that'll be handling this audit. Uh, always excited to work with them. They've been great to work with thus far. Not a lot else to add from my point of view. I don't know if Guy or the, any of the other devs want to want to chime in on anything in particular here? I mean, I would just say, you know, in the in the Discord, it seems like it's hard to know whether, you know, people are bearing uh, serious concerns or, or whether they're just ball busting. But, you know, people submit some comments about uh, the DAO or Beanstalk Farms funding development of forks, uh, which, you know, just to make explicit, is not what's going on. And that would be totally inappropriate, to be honest. So uh, the forks are totally separate. Uh, you know, or at least the, the forks alluded to by Ben in the last meeting and in their article, uh, very different from this uh, fork migration system, which solves the, uh, in in a lot of ways the governance problems that that Beanstalk has been facing over the last couple of years. Yeah, I appreciate that that extra color guy. I mean, I know that that's been yeah a topic of conversation, and um, you know the beauty of having a pretty transparent budget process and um, you know, pretty clear list of of Beanstalk Farms projects is that people can get can find the answers to the those questions pretty easily. You know, like you said, folks like to talk, but uh, at the end of the day, there's some pretty clear information about what Beanstalk Farms is doing, and um, and agree with you that it would be inappropriate for Beanstalk Farms to work on forks. So yeah, there there are are questions about what Beanstalk Farms is doing. There's plenty of information to to make that clear what's what's going on and what isn't. So Asabina's I forgot to mention typing. This, I forgot to mention this earlier, but uh, I just thought of it related to Asabina's last question about utility. Um, another obvious uh, access to that would be, you know, decentralization and censorship resistance, which is very related to this fork migration system. Asabina asks um, a really good question, really interesting one. So uh, they ask, will BIPs continue after the fork migration system is implemented? Or will forks replace BIPs? So I can chime in here real quick because this one's this one's straightforward enough to where I can I can probably give my two cents and then someone can correct me if I've I've missed a detail. But um, as I understand the the system moving forward, when it comes to items that could result in significant changes to the protocol, it'll probably depend on who's performing that development work. And to kind of speak to this idea that forks are primarily engineered to manage governance issues. Again, as I understand it, from my point of view, um, there will probably be instances where forks will be an alternative to BIPs. Probably in a lot of instances will become the primary way that governance is managed. Um, Not sure if it'll be exclusive um, but yeah, probably they'll probably become a primary way of of managing changes to functionality. Is there anything that I'm missing? I would just say I think it's uh, somewhat of an open question. Um, I mean, 
off the dome, it probably makes sense to keep the existing governance uh, mechanism uh, in addition to the fork migration system on this version of Beanstalk, given that you know there's been some discussion and, and some write-ups about how uh, unripe assets are not, not really feasible to, to migrate in any meaningful capacity. So if we were to do that and then also remove their ability to vote and improve uh, the current system, uh, that strikes me as wrong, but that probably requires some more thought. That's a fair point. Good, uh, good additional color. Appreciate that guy. All right. Any other questions or comments regarding fork migration system? So Nasdaq asks, just change that question. Never mind. All right. Trying to watch both chats here quick. Blake. All right. Can jump into. So got the subgraph UI and other updates. So soil. I apologize for the mix up. You want to walk through some of the items that you've been working on? or? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, one thing that I guess, I don't know if we mentioned it yet on this call, actually, but that you'll see in the BIP50 draft uh, is one of the major changes that we're proposing to Beanstalk is that we're actually going to be migrating everything from Ethereum onto Arbitrum. So kind of what I've been working on in the last few weeks in particular is kind of getting the subgraph, uh, the the Discord bots, and you know all the other middleware systems for like our, our integrations, you know, set to to work on those other systems, and it, at least or, or on the other chain rather. So, for the subgraph in particular, that that has actually been a bit of a challenge, um, both like with the actual code, like the code base itself, and then with uh, you know just just like how we're going to actually have it be deployed because you know the the other chains arbitrum for example it has you know something like four or five blocks every second whereas ethereum it's like one block every 12 seconds so you know it's it's a bit different like in terms of how uh you know it interacts with rpcs for for getting the latest information um so that that's kind of been the the majority of my focus is is getting these systems generalized and ready such that we can have them running on the new chain and so there won't be any like disruption to the functionality when that happens um and i mean you know i'm happy to go in more in more detail if anybody's interested but uh, i think that's probably a good summary good sir uh, that's exciting i uh, saw your post the other day i think you had i think you had posted one of the arb scan what yeah when when uh, I uh, mean, I don't remember what post it was. It might have been Signal somewhere, but I um, was excited to see that. And uh, yeah, really, really excited that uh, that the future of Bean may be on our... Any other updates that um, that any of the devs want to talk through? I don't see Space Bean here, but uh, they have been working on the Beanstalk 3, 3 UI implementation, uh, or BIP50 UI implementation, if you will. Uh, one of the main components that's been really hairy is uh, Gen Convert, which is uh, yeah rather complicated. But that's what's on the list at the moment. And I just want to mention, uh, you know, I know there hasn't been a whole lot of fanfare, but uh, this uh, this BIP has been the culmination of, you know, six, seven plus months of work from, uh, I think, just about everyone who has contributed to Beanstalk over the last six months. So it's been a, it's been a gargantuan, uh, excited to see it come together. So shout out to all of those uh, who have contributed and been involved. Completely agree, guys. Definitely appreciate it from the team. All right. We'll open it up to the floor for a few minutes to see if anybody has any other questions or comments that we haven't covered thus far in the meeting. All right. Looking at the chats, things seem pretty clear. Okay. So um, what we'll do is, yeah, we'll put something on the calendar for early next week for a, a specific Q&A session around BIP50 and um, give folks the opportunity to look things over. And uh, yeah, come with your questions. And then the week after that, we'll have a regularly scheduled DAO meeting and uh, probably be talking about a vote somewhere in that uh, that time period as well. Appreciate everybody uh, swinging by. Appreciate your time and, and your attention. We'll uh, we'll get everything wrapped up here and have stuff uh, summarized and posted to Discord and Twitter here over the next uh, day or so. Thanks for your time, everybody.